fresh from his team's latest win in Monaco. We are so honoured to have you with us, Mark, to celebrate our 150th anniversary, especially as the season's still underway. Yeah, Come on. It's, it's quite exciting <laughs> yeah. and obviously winning in Monaco is uh, incredible. It's the best fun ever. Oh, I can imagine, yeah. But let's start at the beginning. You grew up in Australia. Correct. Was motorsport something you grew up with? Um, my, uh, my grandfather was actually a, a wrecker, so wrecking old cars. And um, our family had some farms. My uncle had a farm and we lived on a farm when we were young. And so we were pulling apart tractors and those kind of things when we were young. So I got into vehicles and fixing things early on. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so, you, so you, I guess you had this early fascination and then you went on to university, studied engineering. But how did you get into motorsport? Because it's not like a straightforward industry to get into. So how did you go about that? Well, it's funny, my, my degree at Monash University was reasonably a theoretical degree mm. and I decided I wanted to do some more practical things. And I found there was one company in Australia that manufactured race cars, and actually they weren't at the time, called Ball and Racing. Um, I rang them up and said, can I come and do some work with you um, while I was at uni? And um, they went down there, and I remember the first day they asked me to do something, and um, I did it and came back the next day, and they went, oh, we didn't think you'd come back the second day. <laughs> Not everybody comes back the second day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then sort of seven years later, we'd, um, we'd uh, started to win some things in Australia. Um, and when I was about uh, 27, I thought, I need to go to Formula One, mm -hmm. and I came over to work for Harrow's Grand Prix in, in the UK. Wow. And of course, now currently, you are team principal of Tichicha Formula E racing team. What's the difference? Can, tell us more about e-racing and, and how does it differ from Formula One? Yeah, so there's um, quite a lot of differences. Um, some of them are quite technical and I'm sure so you don't mind the technical things. We love it. Um, we love it. So <laughs> one thing is we have peak power. So we, have, um, we, we can limit the power because it's a battery and you can mm. say this is how much power you can take from the battery. So it's a big difference to a petrol powered motorsport where yeah. you basically give it a certain amount of fuel, make as much power as you want. And that means that across the grid that can vary quite widely and right. that's why you see a lot of differences mm. in, um, in the grid in somewhere like, something like Formula One. We have very restricted aerodynamics because again we want to focus on the electric powertrain because that's mm. the thing that we need to develop and, and to, um, to grow. So everything's really focused on the electric powertrain um, and the software around that electric powertrain. The other things are that we race in cities, so we're obviously in Monaco, similar to F1, although we had a lot of overtaking uh, in, in Formula <laughs> E. Wait to see what happens um, with Formula One in, in the next weeks or so. Um, and we do everything on one day, so it's very compressed. So uh, whereas in m most um, petrol-powered motorsport, you start on a Friday, you do practice, then you go to qualifying on a Saturday, then you race on a Sunday. But for us, it's all in one day. So it, Actually, um, it shows up the best drivers because the driver has to arrive and basically deliver yeah. in, in one day. So right. they're some of the, you know, the biggest things that are different about yeah. Formula E. Excellent. Yeah, that's really interesting. Actually, what, what we sometimes find is that a lot of motorsports enthusiasts, actually, they're really against the electric racing scene. So like, do you prefer like, the, the noise and the, the heat from a petrol car or have you sort of grown to love the all-electric scene? I mean, I love technology. So as being an engineer, um, I think that with an electric powertrain, you can actually do more things than you can do with a petrol powertrain because mm. in a petrol powertrain, you have to worry about the clutch, for example. Yeah. So when you're doing a launch or something like yeah. that, you've got to get the clutch to bite. And that's yeah. what you see a lot of the F1 guys doing when they come to the grid and they have to find bite points and all sorts of things yeah. before you can control the launch. But in electric, it's got power from zero. Mm. I'd love to do one day a full four-wheel drive electric um, vehicle, which has got you can control electric um, motors better than you can control a, um, a powertrain such as an um, internal combustion engine. So from a technical point of view, I think there's more room to, to move in a, an electric vehicle in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be good for all of us, hasn't it? I mean, we've heard quite a lot throughout this show about society's need to embrace more sustainable options where possible. Um, what drives you, no pun intended, <laughs> um, in pushing the boundaries for sustainable motorsport? I mean, it's great, to, it's great to be sort of relevant, I think. Relevance is the really key factor, I think, in, in motorsports and probably any sport. So being more relevant, and for me, it's always pushing the, pushing the boundaries. I mean, in one of the presentations I do, if you remember back in 2009, Top Gear had this crazy car that they built on the, on the show that they yes. made out of old generators and all this kind of I stuff. It was an electric car. Yeah. It's scary how long ago that was now, actually. It's in one of my presentations. But coming from, say, 2009 to now, when there's so many more electric cars on the road, there's obviously we've been racing now for seven years in mm. Formula E. It looks spectacular on the weekend in, um, in Monaco. Yeah. 
things have changed a lot and it's you know, when we started doing Formula E, people really did think we were crazy. I mean, mm. when you look at that really? show on Top Gear and you think that's what we thought they thought we were doing. Yeah. And then to now <laughs> when, you know, we look, I say, incredible on the, mm. on the TV, um, it's amazing to be involved in something that's changed so much mm. over, I say, just 12 years, yeah. but 12 years is a long time, isn't it? Um, so that's the other thing that's, I don't know if it's frightening, but how long it takes things to change. You think yeah. it's happening fast, but actually it's been a long time already. Yeah. Um, that electric um, vehicles and race cars in, in particular have been coming. So I, I enjoy being at the forefront. Um, I do still like classic cars and those kind of things, um, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I enjoy being on the very, very cutting edge where I would say nobody knows the answers. That's always the fun bit, where for yeah. me anyway, when nobody knows the actual answer to, yeah. the, to, to all the questions, let's say. Actually, as a math teacher, I find it unsettling when I don't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so looking ahead, um, what does the future of e-racing look like? So do you think it'll always be battery technology or will we see hydrogen making an appearance? Like, where would you like the future of motorsport to be? Yeah, I think the, the best way of looking at this, in my opinion, is that I think it will always go towards an electrified, let's say, drivetrain. So like a diesel electric train. The, the electric power is used for what it's good, good at, which is torque from zero. So you can even see in Formula One already that um, many of the Kerr systems and other things are all um, on the drivetrain side. Mm -hmm. Then on the other side, you've got the energy carrier, as um, uh, VW likes to call it. So how do you carry your energy in your vehicle? I think that'll change depending on what country you're in. So in France, for example, they have a lot of nuclear power. So it's um, fairly clean from the point of view of CO2. Um, the UK, I mean, the amount of uh, wind turbines we're putting in over the next years, we're already, if you see on some days, we're above 50%. Mm -hmm renewable. There's countries like Portugal, which are really high in the renewable um, uh, stakes. But then you've got a place like Japan, which doesn't really have a lot of space for wind turbines and other things like that. So they're more biased, although because of um, some of the problems recently towards nuclear, but they're heavily looking into hydrogen because they need to, they're one of the biggest importers of um, energy in the world. So long story short, I think places like where I'm from in Australia, with the vast um, spaces and the possibility of wind and and solar, then converting um, that to hydrogen, and then perhaps to things like synthetic fuel, which Formula One's looking at. So even they're you know, starting to figure out how can they go more sustainable. Again, it's quite exciting, all the possibilities. Um, they're obviously not as efficient as direct electrification is at the moment, yeah. but you never know because you know, one day you think this something's not possible, and then five years time, something is possible. Yeah. So to answer your story, I, sorry, your question, I'm excited about what it might be, and I, that's how I can see it. Might all the building blocks might go together in yeah. the future. Mm. Brilliant. And in your spare time, I don't know how you managed to do this. To mm. be honest, you also run a laboratory, don't you, in, in Oxford that studies the future technologies as well. Have you got any exciting innovations coming out of that 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 you can tell us about here? Do yeah. Some news for so us? we do autonomous cars there. Um, so we're actually doing something to a, a truck up at um, Sunderland in one of the manufacturing plants at Nissan, which is an autonomous uh, yard tractor, they call them, uh, terminal tractors. So we're doing that. So it'll be a truck that pulls around trailers in, um, in, the, in the grounds of the, of the manufacturing plant. So that's all, let's say, the next step in electrification and um, autonomy. So I think in some ways you could say that autonomy might be EV's um, uh, killer app, if you remember what that was called yeah. in the old days. <laughs> so um, some people don't know what I mean when I say that. Um, so I think, um, yeah, the, the autonomous vehicles are the next step. So uh, yeah, quite exciting what's wow. going on in the UK. That is exciting, really exciting. Actually, a cheeky question. I mean, I've never actually driven a race car. Is it beyond the realms, you know? You'll make a lovely IET.TV video. Oh, I was going to ask that. <laughs> yeah, you can, do, you can go second half <laughs> for me. Well, one way of looking at it is, that, you know, you could say they're like astronauts, our drivers. So, you know, would you get to fly the space shuttle? That's one, you know, one way of looking at it. But yeah, some of the, there's possibilities of the driving. Tourists. You know the tourist version of astronauts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can definitely go for a ride in, you know, in, in maybe in the, um, in the pace car. So, yeah. you know, the, that, that's definitely a possibility in the safety car. Um, but yeah, there's always possibilities. You never know of having a driver, an electric race car. Yay. <laughs> you never know, right? <laughs> we, we've got Mark saying you we never know. It. We, <laughs> could, be yeah, we, we could be it. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming in and, and sharing your story with us and, and coming in straight after your amazing win. Congratulations mm. as well. You've been an amazing guest and such a difference maker. What a difference yeah, yeah. maker. A brilliant guest for us to have on the show for our 150th anniversary.